I have exactly one hour to photograph the sunset and uh, I just made dinner and said bye to the wife and baby and uh, heading out. See what we can get for some last minute sunset photography. It's been raining and snowing all day so we weren't expecting clear weather until tomorrow but clouds broken up and uh, we got a chance to get some photos. All right, so the goal of this video is to not only get some good sunset photos and maybe some video too for Instagram reels or whatnot, but I want to, first let's turn this uh, heat down, it's pretty loud. I want to uh, show you how to photograph and get your shots on the move because uh, this goes quick here. Even though it's 8.14 right now, the sunset is at 9.05, but the problem is the sun sets behind these mountains. So in just a couple of minutes, we aren't going to have any uh, good shots of the sun. There's gonna be like no good lighting on anything. But for sunset here in Kodiak, we try to capture uh, some nice clouds and hopefully we get some nice red clouds this evening. And I'm being blinded by the sun behind me. Why the sun is still out, we're gonna make our first stop here at Abercrombie and the first thing I want to say if you're in a rush to get sunset photos every time you put your photos on the computer get your memory cards back in the camera formatted get your batteries charged in the camera and your camera bag ready to go so when a moment comes like this out of nowhere you could just head out and hopefully you have a spot you can photograph uh, pretty close to your house or close to wherever you're staying. So we're here at uh, Fort Abercrombie. We're gonna check out what we call the pot potholes, 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 Jesus. All right, so I got a uh, Insta360 recording some behind the scenes stuff and it is really, really uh, low tide right now. So we got the tripod here, see if we can get some long exposure or something. ND filters on the camera. The water's moving so much, so I don't even know if a low, if like a long exposure is gonna look that great, but we'll see. We'll see what we can capture. Still pretty bright, so uh, I don't have the big ND filter. I only have the two to five stops. All right, so there's some nice little pools of water here. I'm just gonna look for like a foreground that uh, might look pretty good. We'll get a couple shots of the mountain, and then I like how the trees go into the water there. So I think we'll find something right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the camera to just kind of find a nice looking foreground see what might look good and what won't look good there's a nice little decapitated starfish there all right well i think i kind of like this composition here it's going to be a little bit wider on the photo because the video's cropped in a little bit well i did a little bracketed shot and if the shot is anything worth it here's the shot here are my first few sunset photos from this evening. Stick around and I'll show you exactly how I edit a golden hour photo in Lightroom Classic. I'm really liking these two rocks right here and this third one here. They kind of resemble the mountains in the background and uh, I think it looks like a really nice composition. So let's go ahead and take this shot here. I don't know if the Insta360 was able to record it, but there's a really nice sun dog up here. I got it in the photo. I think it looks really, really nice. I just put my camera on interval mode and I'm gonna try to uh, walk over here and see if I can hold still for a second and a half for a, uh, a self portrait. And I think I'm gonna be standing in the right spot. If you guys ever wanna see my work, if you're not following me on Instagram, Chris Luck Photo is my Instagram handle, my YouTube channel, obviously. And I think this is where I want to stand. So let's put the hat back on. And I'm gonna try to stand still. Okay, I want to quickly show you how I transform this photo into this here. First thing you're gonna have to do is make sure that you take a second exposure that is lower that captures all of the highlights. This self portrait was overexposed. First thing we're gonna do is select both of the pictures here. We're gonna right click. We're gonna come up to photo merge. 
and we're gonna choose HDR. Now, Lightroom automatically aligns and does auto settings, which I'm just gonna leave it as is. And I'm not gonna do any de-ghost amount. Uh, that looks really good. Already you could tell Lightroom did a really, really nice job. So let's merge it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop it. I was a little off alignment with my tripod placement. So I'm just gonna make sure that the horizon is straight. And I'm going to make sure that I like just the foreground and everything. Now that the horizon is straight, what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna edit this photo starting kind of from top to bottom. And I'm just gonna adjust the white balance just to be a little bit warmer. And we're gonna get the sunset to really pop. Everything else looks pretty good. Maybe the shadows can, yep, I think the shadows are good there. A little bit of saturation, not too much. That looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some mask. First mask is going to bring out the sky and we're gonna drop the exposure just a little bit more. I think that looks fairly good. And you could technically do select sky, but uh, to me that always seems a little unnatural. This photo is naturally gonna be silhouetted a little bit here with me and I do like that better. I want to focus on brightening up these rocks a little bit and not too much over here but kind of in the foreground they are sitting in the shadow but that's why I took a second exposure that was brighter so I know that they will have brightness and uh, not be too noisy. So I'm gonna be pretty rough with this. You can brush it. I think a, a slight radial mask might work pretty good and we're we're not touching it much we are just bringing them up a little bit and we're gonna do a mask for the water here below i think the water looks a little bit too cool so i'm gonna just warm it up just a hair to make it feel like it matches the sky element just a little better and i think that looks good right there and we're gonna give it a little bit more contrast and I think that looks really good so far. And just to show you what we've done already, this is before right here, and this is after. We're gonna clean up some dust spots here at the end of editing, but I'm gonna make sure everything looks good first. One thing I'm not liking is the sky, and I think this is probably how it looked in the camera. We're just gonna test a little radial mask up here, and we're just gonna warm up over here just a little bit i think that looks not too bad and yeah i think that looks pretty good that is working everything is looking good so far we're just gonna check every corner here and see if something doesn't look natural and i think everything is looking pretty good so far i'm not liking this sharp whiteness from the sun here so what we're gonna do is soften that up a little bit and i'm gonna add a uh, let's do sky this time. We'll actually let's just do background. We're gonna select the background and Then we're going to click these three dots here. We're gonna intersect with a radial gradient and We are just gonna draw that just around the Sun just like that With the feather max out and all I'm gonna do here is just soften it up by bringing out the dehaze just a little bit Let's open it up just a little bit more. I think that looks good. One thing I want to do is make the sun halo or sun dog pop just a little more. So what we're going to do is come back up here and we're going to add just a little dehaze. When you add dehaze, it really makes it cooler. It adds a lot of contrast. So what I'm going to do is just warm it back up a little bit. And that looks fairly good. We're gonna mess with some clarity here. And if you increase the clarity, it makes that pop just a little bit better. I don't mess with any of the mixer stuff you can. Like if you don't like the yellow, you can change a little bit. But what I recommend you do is come down here. This is what I do for most of my sunset photos here. I'm gonna take the midtones. I'm gonna grab this little circle and I'm gonna make that a little bit more orange, just like that. Not all the way up here, just a little bit. I'm gonna take the highlights and I'm gonna make them just a little bit more orange, maybe red, 
I'm going to pay attention to the mountains because they are white and I don't want them to look purple or anything like that because it will be easy to change the color and make them look unnatural. So I'm liking a orangish red tone that looks fairly natural. And one thing I like to do is balance these out. It's a little too orange and the water is, you know, reflecting off the sky. So it's going to be warmer, but I definitely like to add a cool touch to, for balance. So I'm going to take the blue and I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit. And then what I like to do is this line underneath the blues in the shadows. This just changes the luminance and we're going to make the blacks just a little bit blacker. Now we got that real silhouette look. Now, once again, this is before, this is after. We see the sun dog is really popped out now. It's not super over edited, but it definitely adds the warmth for the sunset. It brings out the sky with seeing the sun dog. And the final thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these little sensor spots. What we're gonna do is I like just the spot healing brush here. This is the middle one here. And we're just gonna make the brush just a little bit bigger than the spots. We're gonna click. We're gonna find the next one, click. We're gonna find this one. This one. And I think there's one right here. Now we're gonna uncheck. We're gonna lo just look up, make sure nothing looks out of the ordinary. And I think that's it. Now that is my sunset photo. Here's what the original one looked like. It's fairly the same. I maybe want to add a little bit more dehaze here to soften up the sun itself. So let's go find this one, dehaze, clarity. All right, and that is how I edit my sunset photos to make them look super sunsetty, I guess you can call them. All right, I'm gonna try to make it back over here in one piece. I got some pretty cool shots, I think. Um, I might stay here for another minute or two. Insta360 just stepped recording. Hopefully it recorded. I haven't used this camera in a couple months. If you guys live in Alaska or anywhere with low tide, um, where you could be stepping in water a lot. Definitely recommend some extra tough boots. They help. I just have the shoes on right now. They aren't as good. It's nice so you could just step in some water. And... I was able to grab one more photo before the sunset faded away. Well, I uh, ended up spending more time here than I anticipated, but I think I got some really nice shots tonight. That sun dog really helped make a nice photo even better. A low tide was great, so. I plan on going to the harbor, I don't think I need to. I think I'm pretty satisfied here. So I had an hour, captured all these photos in 45 minutes, and uh, I'll just see if the sky turns red in a little bit, but if it doesn't, I'm still happy with everything I got tonight. All right, well, I just got home, and I hope you guys enjoyed this shorter video. I haven't vlogged in a while, and honestly, I miss vlogging, but uh, my older videos didn't get views. They also kind of suck when I look back at them. Some of them were fun. Some of them were just me talking for hours. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want to see videos like this, I'll be more than happy to do them. Earlier in this video, I mentioned having my camera bag ready to go. If you guys want to see what I keep in my camera bag and ready to go, click this video right here. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.